Was the research sample, was it nationally represented and how was it gathered? So we use the mobile internet to collect uh, consumer opinions. We find it's a fantastic way of being able to gain access to this group of people that we see which are called the mobile only internet users. It's very difficult to research them other than using the, the mobile device. And so the data which we collected was actually representative of those people who use mobile media. And so, for example, um, in the various different countries uh, we surveyed, we looked to find a representative sample of this. For example, in South Africa, we know that quite a lot of people use BlackBerry devices and use uh, kind of older Nokia devices. And so therefore, our survey sample is to match um, what this universe looks like. So it matches the device universe in a given country? The device, the age, and the gender um, quotas, if you like. Um, of people who are mobile media users in any one of these countries. And what proportion of your sample watch the English Premier League? So it's quite interesting. Um, we see an awful lot of people follow um, the Premier League on their, on their mobile device. And there's actually different figures between whether they follow it or whether they um, actually um, uh, watch it on there. So we see roughly half of people um, following it, um, looking at news, information, and so on, uh, and roughly a quarter of people watching it. But this depends um, completely on the region of the country. And is that largely men? Yes, it's mostly males. I mean, it skews, I think, 84% male, and it skews very much to kind of younger demographics, so um, 65% uh, of them in the kind of 18 to 34 sort of demographic. And globally, where is the Premier League most popular and least popular? This is where we saw really, really interesting um, contrast, because everybody would automatically think, well, in the UK, that's going to be the place where it's most popular. But actually, it's in South Africa, which we found really amazing. Really. So, um, not massively more, but it is more um, popular in, in South Africa. Also in Saudi Arabia. Um, it's least popular in the US, which is kind of what we expected, seeing as they have so many other different sports which they're interested in there. But yeah, um, other countries other than the UK, particularly in the growth markets of South Africa, was a really interesting finding of the report. And do you have any sense for why it's so popular in South Africa? Um, I think... There's a few things which are combining together here. Um, one, uh, the whole of Africa seems to be football mad, and they absolutely love it, which is fantastic. Um, you also have mobile devices being incredibly important to the way that people are entertained in these growth markets. And so when we look into South Africa, um, really they don't, well, a lot of people don't have the option of using desktop computers to be able to track it and uh, follow um, the results and you know, what's happened in the latest transfer gossip and whatever. And so actually um, uh, those things combining with the excitement and also that the mobile device is so important combine together to make the mobile device the most important um, way to follow the Premier League. Takes me neatly to my next question which is that um, everyone is now viewing the Premier League across multiple platforms, radio, TV, mobile tablets and so on. Mm -hmm. How does that vary between, say, the UK and globally and other markets? Yeah, that was another really interesting finding of it, that actually in the UK we see that um, the TV is now of equal importance to the mobile device for following the Premier League. And so it used to be always that you know, everybody stayed in on Saturday evening to watch um, Match of the Day, and that was how you got your fix of football um, each week. Now the mobile device has gone up on par with TV um, as the, kind of the medium of choice for following it. And this differs between other markets, and so actually globally we see TV still slightly more important than mobile devices, but it's almost on par, uh, and more so uh, mobile is um, more, more important than all the other um, forms of media. So when we talk about that, people keeping up with the Premier League on their mobile phone, they're score watching, aren't they? They're not, they're not actually match watching. No, they're transfer gossip, they're looking at um, uh, the latest um, uh, scandal that's broken, they're looking at um, what scores have come out, looking at match reports, all of those sorts of things. And so I mean, there's an amazing uh, opportunity there for advertisers and publishers to be involved in not just the rights to the, um, to the watching it, but also just the general commentary around what's going on. And mobiles are increasingly playing a part in fans engaging with the Premier League. Where do most people use mobiles to follow scores? Um, so, uh, what do you mean in terms of which countries? Yes, which countries? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, uh, once again, we see this um, really skewing to, towards these growth markets um, and also uh, the UK as well. Um, 
Uh, but um, uh, the Middle East um, really came out very strongly, um, with Saudi Arabia and Qatar showing very strong um, results for this, more so than other places such as India and, and Brazil as well, because Brazil has its very own, its own strong league. Um, I can't remember what the name of it, but it's, it comes out very strongly, um, mm. and the Premier League is an afterthought for them. And so mm. it's really in the kind of. So their national league is stronger exactly, in a sense yeah, than yeah. the global Whereas brand. in Africa, in the Middle East, it's the Premier League which is the dominant one. And. How many people are actually watching it on their phone, as in watching the images, and, and what impact does, do you think 4G is going to have on mobile watching of this kind? So, I mean, we saw roughly a quarter to 20% um, of people who are actually watching it on their mobile device, and this does differ between regions. In China, for example, a lot of people watch it online on computers because there's mm. lots of um, shall we say dodgy services um, which uh, people can use uh, there. Um, Pirated services. There we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, whereas in um, uh, most countries the TV is still the dominant way to actually watch it mm. and I mean I think that's there to stay for a while but it's interesting that you know, 20 to 25 percent of people are actually watching it on their mobile device and when um, you look into the reasons why people are watching mobile video, we've done various different studies around this, mm. um, one of the things which hinders it is actually the speed um, of of um, data downloads um, for this and so um, people actually love doing it because it's a way to fill time um, it's a way to uh, you know, stop boredom you're waiting for a bus or whatever it happens to be it's mm. a fantastic thing that people love to do but the quality isn't quite there and so when 4G starts to come in then instantly those sorts of barriers start to be removed and so the scale and number of people watching on their mobile phone would go up to what? Well, um, I, I, I'm never a forecaster, so I wouldn't want right. to um, put a number on it, but we can definitely be sure that it will rise because of the convenience of it. Uh, and if you have you know, half of people um, following it, a lot of these people would love to watch it as well uh, if the technology was there and the user experience was there. Barclays is the main Premier League sponsor, and it's a global bank with a presence in many countries. How many people do you knew that it was the sponsor globally, and, and where does its brand awareness begin to fade? So this was um, one of the, uh, the major findings we saw from a commercial perspective. Uh, and so um, in the UK, the vast majority of people who followed the Premier League knew that it was sponsored by Barclays. However, this dropped between different countries, which was really um, uh, quite alarming, I think, for somebody who's put so much money into having their name associated um, with, with the Premier League. And so, yeah, in the UK, everything's working fantastic. It's all, it's all good. However, when you looked into um, countries like Saudi Arabia, 34% of people who followed the Premier League couldn't name one sponsor at mm. all. Uh, in China, most people thought it was Coca-Cola. Uh, and so you see really um, varying so, issues of the association which they try to connect um, to the Premier League in other countries, but actually really um, kind of almost wasting a bit of money. Um, the Coca-Cola thing is interesting because that must be a kind of reflected shadow off of some other brand. Exactly. They've been massively associated with the Olympics and with yeah. um, so many other sporting occasions. And so sport must mean Coke in China, um, which is an issue, um, particularly for Barclays, who spent so much money um, uh, on this global rights for the Premier League. And you had information on other types of sponsors that people thought might be associated yeah. with the game. What, what were those? There were, basically, we also put into the study the um, uh, sponsors for the Champions League because um, we wanted to find out if there was any uh, misassociation as well. And so people like Heineken came out, uh, Mastercard, mm. people like that were associated quite strongly with, um, with the Premier League, which I suppose from their point of view is you know, it's fantastic because they've paid for this association with one um, tournament, they've gained that association with football, which has gone on to any type of football. And how much of this brand association do you think is this will be common to any kind of study done with brand association, this kind of confusion? There is always misrepresentation um, from consumers because you know, they do think of one thing and then you're instantly asking them, who do you associate with this? Uh, and the top of mind thing comes, um, comes out straight away. However, with all of these studies, if there's a good job being done, it comes through in the research. Uh, and it seems that actually in a number of these countries, Barclays has quite a lot of work to do um, to try and make sure that it gets its value for money. Alistair, thanks for talking to